Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm going to begin by upgrading the research and development building because we've gotten all the technologies that we can with a uh, cost of 100 science and below so we need to unlock this in order to get the further sciences and we sure have a lot of sciences science to uh, distribute so let's uh, go for this and we see here if I upgrade this astronaut complex upgrade available required for EVA surface sample that should be interesting and research a uh, resource transfer available that's also good but let's upgrade this fairly low cost um, yep and I guess we should upgrade the astronaut complex now and actually that that's pretty cheap so we can go ahead and do that okay and uh, so we can have 12 active Kerbals and I've lost a few Kerbals in this in the course of this series I keep forgetting exactly how I lost Jeb actually I I should remember but I've I've subsequently lost Jeb in other series as well so it's like uh, yeah it's I always seem to lose Jeb it's really unfortunate but uh, we've lost three Kerbals here and I I want to hire a few more um, Alton Matford seems like a prize winner there of course in this version it doesn't cost anything to hire Kerbals so there's no real limit, but I'll, I'll go with this to keep focus so that uh, we uh, get them all with good experience. And the reason I'm doing that, of course, is because... Ah, one thing I forgot to note is uh, I do have KOS installed now. Um, I didn't have it before, I don't think. Uh, I deleted the parts. Why is it showing up, though? Why are you showing up, KOS? Why is your button not showing up? Okay, well, it has the button here. Anyway, I don't want to be in here just yet. Um, so, yeah, I installed KOS for certain purposes that might come along down the road. and uh, But I'm not going to be writing scripts extensively just yet. Uh, I said I deleted the parts because Realism Overhaul adds the KOS system to all command pods anyway. So we don't need the separate parts, and I'll save RAM. Okay, um... So now we can unlock stuff. We really, really don't... I'm not doing airplane stuff in this. Uh, at least that's been the thing. I hate it when the sciences don't have anything in. Yeah. Hydrolox engines, apparently not a, not a real thing. And since we've gotten the J2 and the uh, RL10 already, once you get the RL10, do you even... I guess I guess uh, some of the RL10's upgrades might need the this other Hydrolox thing. That's probably the case. So probably for the RL-10 B2, we probably need that. But yeah, that's a lot of science in order to get that. This is obviously non-RP. Yeah, so all the stuff in this tier are non-RP0. <laughs> that's handy. Uh, okay, uh, arrow spike. That's, that's a nifty thing. Some of these parts of red means that I've dumped the textures, and that means I'm not going to use them. NASA docking system isn't RP0. Uh, do we do we have any docking? We don't seem to have a docking system. That's that's shoddy. I want to do some. I mean, what if I want to send two modules up and uh, dock them together for a mission? I mean, like a moon landing, for instance. Uh, we don't have a docking system that's RP0 compatible. I I might have to just hold my nose and pretend that it's RP0 compatible. That that's probably a technology I want. Can carry a allows control of a vessel of up to twenty thousand tons. I'm not too sure the Saturn instrumentation unit actually allowed for that, but okay. Not complaining. Non RP zero, non RP. I got a lot of non RP zero things. Even the solar panels and the ladders. The ladders aren't RP0. I'm getting very distressed by this. I really want the docking ports. But I guess we'll lay off of that. I, I don't even know what science to unlock now. Because uh, so many of the parts I want aren't apparently part of the, the RP0 system. Like ladders. Anyway, okay, so uh, alright, we'll pass on un unlocking new technologies for now. 
we seem to have all the engines. Uh, there are very few engines out here. I guess maybe this upgrade uh, might give us some better performance out of the RL-10. I suppose. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Let's see if we can get a better variant of the RL-10 by unlocking this. At least I can deploy some science that way. Okay, and there's a mystery mature Hydrolox engine here. Okay, so the big problem that we had before was that the Vimes capsule spacecraft system was really not up to the task of a lunar mission. And the reason for that was it wasn't carrying enough lithium hydroxide, it wasn't uh, carrying enough room for waste, it uh, definitely didn't have enough electric charge, that was the problem that eventually killed our Kerbal. Um, so yeah, it was just not a good system. And so we have designed the, the next gen of uh, capsule spacecraft, and this is the Carrot. The carrot is a carrot, of course, named after the character in the Discworld series. Uh, don't know how to describe him, really. Member of the Nightwatch, uh, the tallest dwarf in existence, uh, and so forth. But uh, yeah, you'll have to read the books to figure out who Carrot was. Carrot Iron Founderson. And so, yes, this is going to be our new capsule system, but we have to do some tests. And as you can see, this is a pad abort test that I'm planning here. And that's important because now we have an abort system. Now, I, I pondered the methods that we could do for an abort uh, carefully. Uh, th there are some things that we have that I could have used, like rocket motor clusters attached to the bottom. Uh, of course, everybody likes to launch towers, but I hate them. Launch escape towers, I just absolutely hate. Um, th I unlocked a baby sergeant, possibly to strap it on, but it turns out it has a node on the top and bottom, but not uh, it's not radially attachable, so that was inconvenient. Uh, I thought about putting a thrust plate uh, multi-adapter in the middle here and attaching some of them. I tried that, but it was quite ugly. Uh, so the solution I found is to use these separation motors. I thought about these, uh, which are more powerful, of course, but actually these are more efficient. And uh, also, uh, these because these are procedural tanks here, if you uh, put one on here, uh, you can't use the offset tool to slide them in. I was hoping to do that, but uh, they just pop right back out, so that's no point. And so what I've done is I've taken the separation motors and tucked them in here. There's a total of 32 of them in order to make a good abort. And as you can see here, uh, it, it turns out that these are tweakable, I think. Hope. Pray. Um, so I've thrust limited them to 33. And so what we have here is a sea level thrust weight ratio of 10. Uh, and that should be good enough for any abort and uh, last three seconds for a total of almost 400 meters per second of delta V and so that is all of them I could uh, sort of have it tilt to one side by diminishing uh, by breaking the symmetry and diminishing thrust on one part but I won't do that for now uh, this of course is a stack decoupler then but let's go through all the other features because there are a lot. The pod is still configured to HTTP because there's no way to configure it to anything else. I would like to make it MMHN204, but uh, its own thrusters use HTTP, uh, which is less efficient, of course. And um, But probably safer for the Kerbal. Anyway, uh, here we have a very, very large battery because we don't want to run out of electric charge. And in fact, if you can see TAC light support here, 10 days just on the battery. So we don't need the solar panels for, so if we take the solar panels off, it doesn't count here. Uh, it's just 10 days with the battery. Uh, that doesn't, think, uh, well, I mean, there isn't any uh, remote control or anything, so that's just how it is. Uh, not remote control, probe part. Uh, so there has to be a Kerbal in to control it, but uh, we won't be using a Kerbal this time. Uh, the abort is configured here. Uh, so that we have the parachute arm, hopefully because we're going up, I really want that at the bottom, but uh, hopefully because we're going up, it's not going to actually deploy, we'll see. Um, but the separation motors all fire, and of course the coupler there. Um, of these thrusters are compared to MMH and N204, uh, they could probably be, no, it's just uh, level 4 is the best they can do. Uh, the total delta V here, if we shift the stages around, you can see is 1,176, which is enough for a moon return, uh, but not really enough to get it into orbit around the moon and return. So that's a problem. Uh, so yes, that's a thing. 
Uh, so other features, lithium hydroxide. I thought I had changed this. This is weird. Uh, hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I changed the dimensions of this. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Anyway. Okay, we want 100 units of that. And so we now have uh, a good amount of CO2 scrubbing ability. And we have waste containment. And we have food, water, and oxygen uh, for 21 days. So that is our pod. Let me save this version. I don't know what happened with the... I wonder how much delta V we have now. A little bit less. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, uh, it's going to be uh, 7,553. Well, uh, since it's a pad aboard, I don't need to fill everything up, do I? Then again, this is all going to stay on the launch pad, so I guess I can recover all of it anyway. Yeah, I, I'll be able to recover it, so we can just leave it be. Okay, let's take it out for a pad abort test. We are not going to have crew in for this. It should be completely automated. Let's go. Oh, I haven't put any... Uh... I wonder if I can control it right now without any probe core like this. Uh, and without any antenna. I just want to abort. I wonder if it'll work. Um... Besides that, the main uh, I, let me set this up properly. The main issue here is whether the, my thrust limiting has brought it down to 10 G's, or whether we're going to see it spike to 30 G's because the thrust limiting didn't work. If that's the case, then I've got a problem. Okay, well let's see if this works. Okay, and oh darn, the parachute deployed immediately. But actually. Yeah, yeah, insufficient avionics. Okay. Well, I mean, it was 10 Gs, I think. That, let, let me just... Fear, oh, no. Nope. Well, this says 2.9 Gs, which is wrong. Um, yeah, it looked like it spiked at 10 Gs, so the thrust limiting worked. Not as far as the Dragon paddleboard, obviously. Should have brought it over to the water or something. Still, not bad at all. Well, let's see. We don't want it landing right on top of the rocket. That would be bad. Obviously, everybody would suggest that I should tune one of them down a little bit to have it go further off to the side, but uh, let's not worry too much about that. I'm a little bit worried about the parachute deploying so soon, though. But with a Kerbal in, we should have the parachute deploy separately, not uh, arm it immediately. It's only because I wouldn't have control over this that uh, we did it this way. Okay, well, I think uh, Kerbal would have survived that. Very nice, uh, not excessive G-forces, did its job. Okay. So let me recover this and I'll recover the other portion as well. Okay, so now we have the carrot on top of the Saraswati rocket. And this is this is the thing. Uh, it'll have to be a free return trajectory because we can't get into orbit around the moon and and uh, and then return. So that's that's a problem. Here's the delta V stats for it. So you can see here we've got uh, this, uh, these two stages, the H1 stage and the J2 stage getting us into orbit. And then the RL10 stage getting us our translunar injection. And then uh, this stage is basically maneuvering and uh, I mean in theory it could get into orbit around the moon but again would not be able to return. So that's the problem we've got. But it's nice to have the fuel margins. Uh, interesting to note of course that everything is at the limit so uh, right here this this is five tons and the reason this is oh it says a thousand two hundred yeah yeah I think I've made a few more changes here hold on let me just check that the lithium hydroxide is all in nope that's why uh oh why does it keep it, every time it dumps the lithium hydroxide whenever I save it doesn't keep the lithium hydroxide that's not good. 
I don't want it to dump the lithium hydroxide every time. Um, so we're going to have to reduce the size of our thing, and I bet I'll end up with about the same delta V available. Yep, pretty much. All right, so I put more antennae. Um, but it keeps the fact that it keeps dumping the lithium hydroxide makes me worry. Anyway, so the reason it's five tons, of course, is because the command pod's uh, capacity is five tons. And then if we attach this very carefully to the right node. Okay, uh, this wouldn't be able to act autonomously. This has a 12 ton capacity. Um, so actually this could uh, carry uh, 17 tons, but it's not very good to have that with the rest of the stages being what they are. As you can see, the rest of the stages are at their carrying limit for orbit. Yeah, we'd have to run this engine to get into orbit if we made it any larger. Um, I guess it is somewhat better. Yeah, I guess we can go for that one. It's not actually showing me the change here. Okay, so we can get 3,570 out of it. Still not enough to get us into orbit around the moon and get us back. So the question I have to ask is, are we ready to retry this mission or is this once again a death trap for our Kerbal? Well, at least we can try the launch properly uh, without a Kerbal in. And we'll test this like so. And since it is not a procedural part, I can use the offset tool properly. Maybe. Yeah, okay. Not a perfect test, but it's the best I can do here. We've also got the action grouping for the toggling of the gimbal on the H1s there. And uh, for the previous launch, I actually had the gimbal locked on those, on the outside engines. So I've freed the gimbal. Oh, okay. I guess I haven't. Strange. Things that I thought I did, but... Maybe I didn't say. Yeah, probably what happened, I made changes, I forgot to save at some point. Okay, now the gimbals are free. But so yeah, this time what we are doing is we're doing an uncrewed test of this. It's, it's expensive, granted, but probably better to do it this way. It seems like our Delta V is now bad. Oh, well that's because we're carrying the Able Delta as well. Now it's got a pretty hefty electric charge draw. Do we have enough? We have uh, just one antenna, so let's let's bolster that. We've got just this one always open and then that one, but I think I should uh, add a few more of these. Obviously, we don't need so much by way of antennas on the crewed mission, but now we need some. All right, so let's see if this Kerbal is safe. Now you'll notice that the first stage goes up to four, a four thrust weight ratio, four Gs, if you will, and the second stage is throttleable, so we can cut this down and make sure it keeps below four Gs. So yes, that way is this should work out nicely. Let's just see. Okay, we're time warping to the proper relative inclination with the moon. Okay, that should be good enough. Kerbal Joint Reinforcement does its thing. We put some distance between ourselves and the rocket. Throttle is up, SAS is on. Smart ASS is up. Ignition. And launch. And off we go, seeing where this rocket can bring a Kerbal to a flyby of the moon. We don't currently have any contracts, by the way. So I'm gonna have to, I'll pick some up at the end of this, after I do this test. Well, with the gimbling free, I hope it is free. Yeah, it looks like it. 
Uh, it looks like everything is nominal. Let's begin pitch maneuvers. Okay, we are past map one. Past the speed of sound, approaching max Q probably. Still going up there. I'm sure that's enough, lifting my side. The pod itself carries a lot less, and that seems to last for quite a while. Uh, come on, pod. Where is your... It's only got 1.5 in the pod itself. So yeah, it's got quite an overabundance of lithium hydroxide there. Okay, the gimbling is huge, so I'm gonna cut gimbling on the, on the outer engines now. So now it's just the vernier thrusters. Oh wait, no no. Doesn't seem to have locked gimbling at all. Okay, now it's locked. Yeah, now it's locked. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to tell it to rotate the 30. How's the temperature on the pod? That's our key thing here. Looks okay. No, no big temperature problem here. Okay, set. And J2. Not much by way of roll control at this point because we've only got one engine. But again, can't use vernier thrusters here because there are no vernier thrusters that work with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So if I was going to write a program for this, I'd say that probably through this stage we should spend a lot of time hanging around 25 to 30 degrees. Seems like the thing to do. The problem with the KOS is it might try to unnecessarily control roll and be so preoccupied with trying to stop the roll from happening that uh, it'll ignore the pitch. I've seen it do that sometimes. With I, I'm, Of course I'm going to be using bait controls, not uh, manually inputting what the control setting should be. Not just yet. Not there yet. So. Yeah, that's a consideration. The fact that this can't control the roll. Smart ASS knows that it can't control the roll and it, it just sort of lets it be. But I think uh, KOS can sometimes be preoccupied with the roll. And really the tricky part isn't uh, so much managing the gravity turn. That's, that's relatively easy. I'm trying to figure out exactly what to do here. Of course, whenever I get to this part with the second stage trying to get into orbit, I manage it by looking at the numbers, but I have to somehow translate that into something that KOS can understand. I don't want it to cut the engine too quickly, or to be, you know have a non-circular orbit. So that's that's the trick. It's only got one chance now. Of course, I've dumped engine igniters, so technically it could relight this engine, but I don't want it to. I want to maintain that sense of realism where we only light the engine once. Now interestingly the way it's configured right now I don't think I'll need to cut the engine. Uh, it will run out short of orbit so might not be a bad thing in terms of trying to write a script to handle this. Well we're getting above 4G here let's throttle down as promised. But that's the end of it. Okay separation Thrusting forward. Oh, that's a lot of RCS. Oh boy. Okay, but uh, we've boosted a little bit forward. We've only got a tiny bit of burning left to do. Okay, well. Let me just wait until we're very close to apoapsis and then we can do that. Okay, I think we can go for orbit here. 
Whoa, pitch down, not good. Come on. Okay, well, well maybe no fine controls. Let's get this lined up properly. Okay, 193 by 177. Pretty darn tight, but anyway, um, good thing the second stage will re-enter, so I guess that's a positive. Now, let me plot for the moon. Okay, I've opted for an approach that takes us to 100.8 kilometers around the moon and keeps us loose around the Earth. And so we'll have to do an, a correction in order to bring our, our Earth periapsis back down. But we've got enough fuel for this, as you can see. So uh, we'll go with this sort of maneuver. And let's go to the node. We should be on fine. Nope, we're not in fine. Let's go to fine controls so it doesn't overdo things. As you can see we have to rely on the battery during the transit, uh, during the burn, the trans lunar injection burn. Uh, I probably need to run that just to stop it from going over. But uh, yeah, but we have two days worth of battery power with even with the controller on the RL10 stage. So one other thing we need to do is, of course, assess what kind of re-entry we need to have from the moon. And let us use RCS to simulate. Oh, let's get full RCS. Simulate settling down the fuel. Okay, lighting the RL-10. Switching back to fine control. Okay, here we go. Just a few seconds left here. Let's go to the map view to see what's going on. Hey, take off Smart ASS to prevent. Oh, right, we don't have any. Oh, we don't? Hmm. The Able Delta doesn't have. Okay, well that's a problem. Right, I keep forgetting which ones have SAS and which ones don't. Neither the Able Delta nor the Agena appear to have SAS available. Not a problem for the crewed mission, of course. We should have slapped one of those tiny ones. I think those actually have SAS, weirdly enough. Okay, so that is done. And now, separation. Uh, yeah, RCS a little bit forward, please. It'd be a trivial thing to put one of those tiny controllers that we used for the lander in the previous episode onto this. So, yeah, whatever. Okay, so the panel's out. Now, the... The electric charge consumption of the Able Delta is way more than the Kerbals apparently need. So, as you can see, it says two days here, and Tac Life Support said that this was enough for ten days. So, hopefully this will be an adequate test of our electric charge system. Okay, so now we've got four days worth. Uh, that's not good enough. Wait a second. I think we're now on a crash course here. Let's do a mid-course adjustment. Okay. Hmm. Oh, we haven't even brought our main antenna out. So we've got those guys. We also got this one. Two days. Okay. Uh, we should be able to bring the orbit down into something reasonable in time. I should also try the electric charge trick uh, locking the battery. It won't be necessary for the crew mission again the crew will use much less electric charge than this but for future reference. Okay well, we'll make that sort of adjustment in 14 hours. Okay, well, let's, uh... I don't know what's gonna happen if I lock the battery now. 
Let's wait 14 hours. We've got that much. And then we'll do the burn. And then we'll see. Wouldn't have been hard to put in enough solar panel rate to satisfy the Able Delta. Now that we have these solar panels. Of course, we didn't have these for the previous mission. Just unlocked this recently. Hmm, I wonder if these are technically RP0 kosher. Didn't really check that. Before slapping them on, I mean. I remember there are some solar panels in the unlocked technologies that aren't aren't RP0 happy. So, uh oh, no connection. Well, uh, our maneuver should be in line of sight. Okay, here we go. Just a little bit more. Going to map view. Oh, where is our periapsis? Okay, let's fine tune. Let's say, I think, 60, 63.6. Let's try it there. Hopefully it won't have to cycle around, and hopefully it won't burn up. Those are the two bad options. All right, now let me try and exit the Moon Sphere of Influence without messing that up. Yeah, that's in 12 hours. We'll still have battery life there. Okay, well it's at 60 kilometers now. Let me... Let me fine-tune that back to a higher altitude. Okay, 63.8 sounds a little bit better. Now, now I'm going to do the locked battery test. So, we would have gotten this back anyway. But, uh, we wouldn't have been able to, well, we might still not be able to dump the... Have we done x-ray data and all from here? No. High over Kerbin. High over Earth. Okay, let's transmit that. So we got some science after all. Log temperature. Yep, transmit that. Technically, we could separate this module off now and just return with the capsule, but uh, yeah, let's try the locking the battery thing. Okay, now we have locked battery. We have no... Co oh, darn, we have no connection. Does it work? Oh. See, I would have expected that with no connection, I can't even access this menu to... Yeah. That's a bit weird. Anyway, this shows what I know. Okay, well, should be safe to unlock the battery now. We're pretty close to our periapsis. Now, let's also make sure we have electric charge moved up. There's no charge in the pod left. There's no charge up here left, so once we decouple, we'll have no charge. Fortunately, we have unlocked the ability to transfer resources. So this is good. Unfortunately, we have not unlocked the ability to transfer resources quickly. Perhaps that's a further upgrade. Definitely not the trajectory that the Apollo astronauts took on their way back. This so looks like we'll end up in the Atlantic at night. Oh, we have no communication. Oh, uh, this has a 300 kilometer range, which is not much. Basically, it's going to be all on its own after this. So, let's make sure our parachute has the right info. Uh, let's wait until point... Yeah, that's a good pre-deployment altitude. Okay. That's satisfactory. So let me arm this now. Hello. Arm. Okay, so that's armed. This is retrograde. 
going to unlock the well I'm gonna put finder control on then I'm going to unlock this HTP tank alright and with that we will discard the service module and we'll have no more communication with well we might have minor communication with this thanks to a 300 kilometer range but that's about it okay there it goes oh we still have communication through what I wonder well, 300 kilometer range, of course, doesn't take into account the range of the surface centers. I should have told Remote Tech to hold it retrograde, but uh, one thing I should have done was uh, enable descent mode. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, we can't tell it that now. Well, let's see what it does without descent mode. I'm surprised we haven't done didn't do uh, high over the earth experiments with the x-ray detector as well as the thermometer. I thought we would have done that. Well, uh, blade of shielding hasn't been touched yet. Pod temperature 400 and going up. I guess we can keep that out. We're still past orbital speeds. Our g-forces are getting pretty high. Now at 6g Hmm, past 9G. Well, it's not a soft ride on this end. And it uh, looks like we're definitely coming down. Blade shielding has started to wear off. 10G. Well, of course, uh, we can activate descent mode, but uh, the problem now is that I didn't put it in descent mode here, and so we don't know whether descent mode would produce a... Uh, uh, skip out of the atmosphere. That's the only concern. Otherwise, the same mode would definitely keep the G levels a little bit more moderate. I don't think these levels would kill the Kerbals, but it's hanging around uh, past 11G for quite a while. I don't know. Good thing we did the test. Ooh! Um, nothing should be... Oh, crud. Huh. A blade of shielding ha did not seem to protect us this time. We had plenty of it left, and still it overheated. Well, good thing we didn't send a Kerbal this time. I... Ooh. This is quite unfortunate. Uh, let's go back to the Space Center and talk about this. So it's a solemn night time at the KSC, and of course we've got a lot of trouble on our hands because that didn't survive. It had the blade of shielding. Uh, the blade of shielding wasn't wearing off quickly enough to prevent the heating. So that is... that's a difficulty. I did not anticipate. So I'll have to do some thinking about that. Next time I probably won't... well I obviously won't be launching a Kerbal in that system. Uh, good thing we did the test. Uh, yeah, I think I think we'll I'll take a look at the contracts at the beginning of the next episode and decide what to do from there. Probably an unmanned thing while I ponder whether we are really good to go with another crewed mission. And of course, yeah, we I mean last time we did a crewed mission, we lost a Kerbal. So, yep, probably a good idea to think about it. All right. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.